First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukhah Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who honor the truth of the gospel of Yahweh Shai from through the Holy Spirit. Honor, salutations, and blessings to the men that are preaching the gospel of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, in all sincerity, diligence, and truth, feeding the sheep of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And peace, grace, and blessings be upon the house of David, which is the elect, the men, women, and children that are predestined to receive salvation and to be the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of Israel. So um, I see uh, the brother, I did an article, I did a video on this article, and um, you know, I just went to go look at the article and read it. You know, I just wanted to add my uh, spiritual, uh, you know, two cents, um, because, you know, this is, uh, this is the, the times that we're in. Okay, that that uh, vision is speaking. Okay, as it says in the book of uh, Habakkuk, the uh, second chapter. All right, um, the vision is yet for an appointed time. And when you go into uh, uh, you know the visions that the prophets you know had, all right, one of the main um, you know visions of you know of the of before the end of this world, the the uh, apostle John, a revelator, he uh, saw the uh, karagma all right the motb and you know through the spirit um giving us the uh, understanding all right we know that the karagma that john saw was the uh, implantable you know um as you see here okay <laughs> and we know this um even because now it's a uh, uh, your, your your pages will become uh be get striked if you mention you know if you mention this as being something that is you know wicked or something that is that you shouldn't take all right because this devil he's uh you know fashioning the society to accept to desire all right uh, uh this in uh in in you know being put within you all right um and as we continue to keep you know uh, moving towards you know, the end of this age, this is going to become more and more and more talked about. It's going to become uh, more and more accepted and it's going to become mandatory. All right. In order for you to be able to uh, uh, live. All right. Within the uh, the the um, the realm. All right. Uh, of what they call the status quo of of society. All right. So it says, quote, solid reasons to um, CHIP kids, World Economic Forum, all right? And none other than the WEF, which the WEF, as we have been heralding, heralding more and more, all right, you know, they are, you know, in the forefront of pushing this, you know, great reset, this um, uh, a fourth industrial revolution which they spoke about um actually i don't even have that article pulled up but they spoke about what they what they what their desires are what their plans are for the future which the future is now <laughs> um they want to have people embedded with uh devices okay so that they can be connected um at all times to the system so let's read it it says an article on the world economic forums website makes the case for Implant technologies. Human implant technologies will soon become a commodity. A blog post published on the World Economic Forum's uh, website last week suggests, arguing that there are solid and rational reasons for M, M chipping children with location trackers. Now, <laughs> you know, every time we, we speak about the, you know, the, the MARK, the Karagma, and, when, and they talk about the location trackers. We always got to mention what, uh, you know, uh, Bishop Nathaniel of the IUIC said, man. All right. Because uh, him being a uh, false teacher, you know, said that what the, the that the, um, M, the MCHIPs don't have location trackers. But and that was, you know, a few years ago, I believe it was in the month of June. <laughs> um, he said it. But as you, as we see, and as time, as we always say, time will tell. Okay, time will tell because through time, prophecy is is fulfilled. Okay, and that's what 
that's why the scripture says here in the book of Ezekiel 33, verse 33, it says, and when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. All right, so when something, when it says and it comes to pass, that means that it became a, uh, uh, what was spoken now is, is, is um, currently taking place. Let's see what it says in uh, another translation. All right, because you read a lot of times in the scriptures where something says, uh, and it came to pass, meaning that it, it became uh, became a, a part of, of uh, the present. So let me see what it says. <laughs> when all this comes true, okay, and when does something come true? Something comes true when it's when it presently is taking place. All right. Um, but when all these terrible things happen to them, all right, when all this comes true, and surely it will come. Okay, so it says, and when it comes to pass, lo, it will come. So there is no um, might, there is no maybes, there is no, you know, it's a possibility, you know. The words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, um, as it says in Isaiah 55, verse um, 11, it says, So shall my word that be, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. All right? Because nobody can, can stay the Lord's hand. Nobody can stop the Lord's plans. So if the Lord spoke something, as it says in, uh, uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, if I'm not mistaken, it says that the Lord is not a man that he shall lie. All right? He's not a, he's not a, a, a flesh. And in as also is written, let me get that. Isaiah 46, verse 9, it says, Remember the th the former things of old. And that's why we have the book of remembrance. This is why the most high Ba'ashim uh, ba Shai, you know, gave us these scriptures and then gave us the Holy Spirit to be able to discern, to be able to break down these dark sayings, these parables, these prophecies. Okay? How can we remember the former things of old if we're not left a book of remembrance, if we're not left a record? That's why this Bible is so is important. That's why it's a book of life. Okay, so that we can remember, you know, Salakia. Um, you know, the spirit just hit me, so let me get that. Second Peter chapter three, verse um one. It says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you. In both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Okay, so this is why the, the, these these um, epistles, these uh, books that were written by you know the scribes of the prophets, all right, uh, the the law, all right, the Torah, the Tanakh, okay, the Apocrypha. This is why all these things were written and they were kept over millenniums. All right, it's it's through the power. And might and will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, so that in these last days we can have our pure minds, all right, the elect, all right, uh, uh, pure minds are stirred up by way of remembrance. Now, I mentioned it and I'll just prove it that we remember through what? Through the record, all right, through the scriptures. That's how we remember. That's how we remember who we are, okay, us being Israelites. Right, that's how we remember the names of our power. In, in, in Yahweh, in, our, in the name of His Son, our Savior, Yahweh Shai. That's how we remember who our adversaries are, are you know, our enemies are. All right, that's how we remember, you know, uh, uh, what the promises are, the covenants, the giving of the law, the adoption, all these things. How do we have that remembrance? If we didn't have the scriptures, we wouldn't never have that. Okay, that's why you had a, a, a group called the, the Bible Destruction Group. Okay, that's why you had this devil. Because he couldn't get rid of the scriptures, all right? He got a bound. Although the Lord gave this devil, uh, you know, uh, the fatness of the earth, though he gave him, you know, the power, all right? He gave him uh, uh, us into his hands. <laughs> the one thing this devil could not do was get rid of the Holy Bible. He could not touch the scriptures in, in the sense of getting rid of the message that was going to awaken us out of that dead state that we were in. You see, and that's why ultimately now they're they're trying to come with uh, different um, schemes, mechanisms to you know basically, which they're going to do, uh, try to um, outlaw the Bible. 
okay, or outlaw, you know, uh, uh, the interpretation, you know, uh, that we have of the, of the scriptures. All right. So this is a uh, map um, Malachi chapter three, verse um, 16. It says, then they that feared the Lord, Yahweh spake one spake often one to another and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. So this book of remembrance was written uh, uh, for us, man, for the ones that fear the Lord. Because as it is written as prophecy, okay, which prophecy will always come to pass because those prophecies are the words of the Lord. All right, now you got false prophets. You got uh, people who speak things out of their own heart and not of the Most High. Those prophecies are not going to come to pass. But the prophecies that are being spoken by the prophets that the Lord sent, those things will surely come to pass. And that's why in Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter, it says, then... Oh, so like, did I read that? Um, it says, Lord, come, then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. That's how you're going to know is by way of these words, whether those words come to pass or not. All right. So as you read here, it says a book of remembrance was written before them, before him, for them that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. OK, and, th and all of the prophets. The servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, guess what? They prophesy in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Because the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all this is all these all this stuff that is happening in the world on the left hand and on the right hand is all to exalt our power, the only one true living power, Yahweh, through his the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. Point blank period, man. That's what the mean that's what the, the, the meaning of life is. Okay? And this right here is all a part of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's plan. So when you go back, so like I didn't finish this, uh, when you go back to Isaiah 46, verse 9, it says, Remember the former things of old. So now we know how we remember the former things of old and the importance of the of remembering of the former things of old. For I am power, Yahweh, and there is none else. I am power, and there is none like me. All right, and that's what this devil fails to <laughs> fails to realize. But he is soon, soon about to uh, uh, um, get get that reality check, man. Because this devil is going, he's going, he's going too far. All right, and, and and you know that's the same because he's not going too far. He's going the the he's going to the bound that the Most High allowed him to. But the Lord allowed him to go that far so that the Most High can bring that judgment, that destruction, that his wrath upon him. That's why he is called the 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 uh, the wrath fitted to destruction. The asalaki, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. This devil is fit. The the way he lives, the way he does, his mindset, all right, how he has ruled, he is destruction is fit for him. <laughs> okay, it's like you know when you wear again a pair a pair of pants, all right, uh, uh, you know, or your favorite shirt. You like that shirt not only because it may look good, or you like those pants not only because you like the style, but you like how it fits you. It it it, it fits you or like a sneaker. You know, it fits you very well. Well, guess what? Destruction fits you devils, fits Esau Edom very, very, very well. Perfectly, matter of fact. Destruction fits you perfectly because you are the son of perdition. And when you go to the word perdition, it means destruction. Okay? You bring destruction wherever you go, and therefore destruction is going to follow you. So it says, verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. That's what they're coming to pass, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. You see that? And that's why no matter what, what the what the word of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai says, that's what's going to take place. And this is why, even though people think we're crazy, all right, even though people say, oh, you guys are nuts, you guys are, uh, you know, spirit theories, all these things, but guess what? It's still happening. These things are still taking place. This is becoming prevalent in this world because it's not because of us. It's because this is what the what the father said. This is his, this is his pleasure. This is his doing. All right, so let's read some more. It says, the author, Vice President R R and D of the 
Inter-University inter Microelectronics Center, Kathleen Phillips argues that augmented reality technology has the ability to transform society and individual lives and despite sounding scary, will undergo the same natural evolution as wearable tech. All right, see, they want to they want to uh, transform this type of lifestyle where people, you know, are are uh, are embedding, you know, the this this device within them. They want to transform that from being some dystopic, scary, uh, authoritative, draconian way of life to oh, this is just a natural evolution of things. This is just what you know we are doing. Just like how we're wearing technology, we, it's even better if you put it in you. Okay, and as you see here, it has the ability to transform society and individual lives. What did uh, uh, Klaus Schwab uh, say? The fourth industrial revolution will not only change the way you interact with the environment, it will change you. Okay, they're not, <laughs> these devils are not playing, man. Okay, this isn't some sci fi, uh, uh, 3000. In 50 B, uh, AD life that we're talking about, we're talking about now. Okay, these devils they got a they got an agenda that they want to have this completed within the next eight years. All right, 2030. So they're moving very fast, very very quickly <laughs> because Satan has entered. Satan has been in them, and Satan is telling them. It, it, that they got to move quick, all right? They're, they're wearied with the multitude of their counsels, all right? That's why when you go here to the book of John, <laughs> verse 13, verse 27, it says, see, what Yahweh Shai, he prophesied that one of his disciples, let's read it, uh, John tw uh, 13, verse 21, and when Yahweh Shai had said thus, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me Okay, see Yahweh Shai testified. Okay, and then he was speaking about you know his betrayal from one of his disciples, which we know was uh, um, which was uh, 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 Salakia Judas Iscariot, right? But Yahweh Shai already knew that he already had that understanding, he already had that knowledge that he was going to be betrayed, and he knew who was going to betray him. And guess what? The betrayal of Yahweh Shai was actually prophesied and it came to pass. Right? So now let me jump. Verse 27. And after the and after the sop, now Yahweh Shai said, um, I just read 26. It says, and Yahweh Shai answered, It is he, Salaki, he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simeon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. <laughs> All right. Satan entered into uh, into Judas Iscariot. Then said Yahweh Shai unto him, that that thou doest, do quickly. Okay. And that's exactly what we are saying uh, 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 to this devil, man. Because uh, scripture tells you he comes after the working of Satan. Right. And Satan is in him. This, this devil, his energy is of Satan. So he's moving quickly. Why is that? Revelation 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. All right. He has a short time. So you got to do what you do and you got to do it quickly. Okay. Because regardless of how far you think you're going to go the end of this of, of this age is with you being destroyed your kingdom being destroyed and you going into captivity and the elect of the nation of Israel getting victory over you over your image over your over your karagma all right and yes in your kingdom being burnt to 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 sand man <laughs> all right Reading on, it says, hearing aids or glasses are no, long, no longer carry a stigma. They are accessories and are even considered a fashion item. Likewise, implants will evolve into a commodity, she wrote. Yep, and, and how do things become a fashion? What does Esau use? He uses Jake. So, and with something we prophesied about also. 
They're going to use these celebrities, these influencers, these actors, uh, these athletes to fashion, uh, uh, um, to make, you know, the, and the, and the, the, the karagma a fashion statement. Okay. Make it a commodity. You go into the word commodity, something that is beneficial, a raw material or prime primary agriculture product that can be bought and sold as such as copper or coffee, um, says so a type of produce, an article, object, a thing, artifact, piece of merchandise, export or import. Okay? So it's something that is a, a, a primary product. Okay? And as we know, as the scripture says in Revelation 13 and 16, that this karagma is going to be a primary product of, of, uh, of being able to buy and sell. So it says, Phillips believes an augmented society is more or less inevitable. And that the real question is how will it be regulated? The limits on implants are going to be set by ethical arguments rather than scientific capacity. All right, there goes that augmented word, augmented society, augmented reality. And what is augmented? Okay, <laughs> Augment, uh, augmented reality. Augmented reality is an interactive experience of a real world environment where the objects that reside in the real world um, are enhanced by computer generated per, uh, perceptual information, sometimes across multiple sensory mo modalities, including visual, auditory, hepic, uh, heptic, uh, simul, um, sim simul salakia. I'm going to try to mess that up. Summitosensory. Summitosensory or olfactory. All right. So basically all of your senses being being augmented by a computer generated uh, perceptual information. All right. And that's what this devil boasts on his technology. All right. His his, his uh, pseudoscience his lying wonders. You see, and that's ultimately that goes all the way back to that old that old uh, uh, serpent. OK, that that beguiled um, Eve. OK, he uh, he offered her an augmented reality. Genesis three, verse one, it says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. The serpent being the spirit that was in Esau or the, the spirit uh, uh, of Esau that was in this man. All right. And the beasts of the field are the other nations. All right. Because they didn't have the knowledge and wisdom and understanding that made them alive, that made them a man. All right. They were, uh, uh, you know, basically looked at as as uh, equivalent to, to to beasts, just like the position that the Lord put Nebuchadnezzar in. Right. It says, which the Lord power hath made. And he said unto the woman, yeah, have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. See, this is uh, the subtle, the subtle, subtleness of the beast of the serpent, I should say. OK, and he always has this mindset to want to challenge the authority in the in the uh, power of the most high it says and a woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruits of the tree of the gardens trees of the garden but of the tree but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden the most high have said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest it least ye die and the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die you see that that's the lie right there okay <laughs> For the Most High doeth know that the, in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And that's what this devil, okay, uh, uh, is doing with this technology. He's trying to usurp the authority of the Most High, all right, and he's trying to surpass his bound and and be becoming a god. He's trying to be a god using uh, the technology, all right. And that's where you get the augmented reality from. So let's go back here. It says, um, as an example of such ethical regulations, the author points to the questions of whether or not children should be implanted with M M C H I P S. <laughs> All right, call them, uh, you know, C hips. I heard a brother say that. <laughs> it says there are solid, rational reasons for it, like safety. She writes, noting. That for some it might be a bridge too far. So this is the the rhetoric, man. 
Oh, there's a rational reason for it. Safe. Think about these children. Think about all of the children that got abducted. Think about all the these uh, uh, pedophiles that are out here. You know, uh, uh, the the um, the runaways. All these things. Okay. Because remember, this devil. He doesn't want. He doesn't want any sector of society, uh, uh, age group. Okay, uh, status. None of that. He doesn't want anybody not being a uh, karagmut. So he has to appeal to all different uh, um, uh, demographics. He got to appeal to the older people. He got to appeal to the younger people. He got to appeal to the rich people. He got to appeal to the poor people. He got to appeal to the healthy people. He got to appeal to the non-healthy people. He got to appeal to the travelers. He got to appeal to the workers. He got to appeal to everybody. And that's why they're, and that's why ultimately, because as a, as a, it says in Revelation 13, which we you know we know, but I pull it up, Revelation 13 verse 16, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a karagma in their right hand or in their foreheads. Okay, so the way that they're going to appeal to have the children uh, be karagma is by saying what? It's for safety reasons. It's a rational thing. It says as for who will oversee the ethics governing the issue, the the use of such technologies? See, and they're talking about this as if this that this is something that they already know what it's going to be. So now they're just you know, and that's the that's the thing. Every so often, whether it be it used to be every couple you know months, but now it's like every day <laughs> they're talking about you know the 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 implantable karagma. Okay. Because I remember back in the day, you know, when I first came into the truth, you know, it's not back in the day, but um, when I first came into the truth, you know, when when you, when you came across an article that dealt with the Karagma, like a mainstream media article or something that was, you know, uh, um, reputable, verified source, it was like, that was like gold right there. Like, oh man, I want to bring this out. But like now, because prophecy is speaking, because the, as it says in Habakkuk, as, we, as I uh, mentioned, the vision is yet for an appointed time, and we're getting closer and closer to that time. So, what is happening? That vision is becoming, is as it says, it shall speak. It's becoming active, more and more active. Okay, so that's why that's why even how as uh, how they talk about it is not something like a what if or a maybe in the you know in the far future. No, this is like yo, we're doing this right now. All right, now we need to set up the regulations. We need to set up how we're going to present it because they already know how they're going to how it's going to be. But they're now engaging with the, the the civilians to see. All right, you know this is what it is. Let's keep talking about it. Let's keep bringing it up. Let's keep talking about it. Let's keep bringing it up to the point people become desensitized. To the point, as she said, it becomes a natural evolution of things. Right. So it says uh, Philip states that the ethics should not be preached from an uh, from an academic ivory tower overarching or independent institutions should guide policymakers and researchers in the augmented societies on the do's and don'ts now who are this independent institutions is not the world economic forum an independent institution <laughs> is not the imf an independent institution you see that but she they're not going to mention those Right. They're going to talk about, oh, you know, uh, 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 we read it. It says the do's and don'ts and help build the ethic frameworks on societal aspect, aspects of augmented reality technology. She wrote Philip provides examples of such regulations by pointing to the Council of Europe, which recently launched a tr uh, strategic action plan for issues raised by the application of neurotechnologies, as well as a wrath Rathen Rathenau Institute, founded by the Dutch government, which assesses the impact of technology on our lives. Meanwhile, the World Economic Forum chief, Klaus Schwab, has previously suggested that there will be a so-called fourth industrial revolution. And why, why can he suggest? It's not a suggestion. He's, he's telling you. And why is he telling you? Because the, the, the rulers of the darkness of this world, they are the ones that's doing this. All right. They're the ones that have, as we, as we know, it says in the book of Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So they have this mindset that they want to push society, push the world to be implanted, you know, with this uh, uh, device so that they can have complete, you know, control over 
uh, how you, you know, what you're buying and selling, when you buy and sell, where you're going, you know, uh, everything. They want to be the most hot. Okay, they. That's why it says in the book of uh, Isaiah forty-seven. Isaiah forty-seven, verse. Um, 10 it says for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness the, the the pride of your heart has deceived you thou hast said none seeth me so they think that they're doing all of these things in the secret councils they think that they're content they still are looked at as an angel of light all right <laughs> the lucifer light bearer illuminati all right they think that they're doing all of this darkness all of this wicked works in the darkness but the lord has the the light shining on these devils through his men through the prophets now that light is being sh is being shown all right on them but because of who it's coming from most people won't hear it most people won't it, most people will ignore it because as it says in a book of um let me see if i can find that is it ecclesiasticus 10 uh, um Salakia, um, where it speaks about how a rich man, you know, when he speaks, it gets extolled. Let's see, rich, extol. Yep, Ecclesiasticus 13, verse 23, it says, when a rich man speaketh, every man holdeth his tongue, and look what and and look what he saith. They extol it to the clouds. All right, and, and Esau is, is going to use his position and uh, to entice, to persuade, to seduce the masses of the people to believe that this is something that is beneficial. That that taking this karagma, that this fourth industrial revolution, is something that will better your life. All right, the the whole you know Neuralink, the the brain chips, all of that. Okay, that's why the scripture tells you that uh, um, those that were deceived by the beast. Okay, because because <laughs> he's going to be, he's going to deceive many into thinking that these things are better, that this that this way of life is actually better for you. It says, but if the poor man speaketh, they say, what fellow is this? And if and if he stumble, they will help to overthrow him. Okay, so when when the when the poor man speaks, which is the position that the prophets are in, right? Nobody said, "Who is this? Who is this? who's talking? Who, who who are you? You're, we know who you are. All right, you ain't nobody. All right, hey, so we went to school with you. You know, you you this person, you're that. All right, you're you're not nobody that's that's in this realm of of knowledge and and have this uh, high higher way of learning and thinking. But see, that's why the Lord said what that the foolishness of this world, the the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the Most High. And the Lord also said that He will confound the uh, the wise. Okay, He will confound the wise. Let's see, First uh, Corinthians. Nine, uh, 1 verse uh, 19 it says for it is written I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudence where is the wise where is the scribe where is the disputer of this world have not the most high made foolish the wisdom of this world all right let's jump to um verse 27 it says but the most high have chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise and the Most High has chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty, and the base things of this of the world, and the things which are despised have the Most High chosen. Yeah, the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Hey, man, call a lawyer, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, for doing that, man. All right, because even Yahweh Shai said it, what? That, um, that, uh, 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 you did not you did not give this to uh, you know the prudent, but you revealed it unto babes, even as it was good in your sight. Okay, it was good in the Most High sight to um, give this knowledge and, 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 and wisdom to the base of this world, to the ones who are who are looked at 
as being uh, 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 nobodies, all right? As as Paul said, the offscoring of the earth, all right? Luke 10, verse 27, And in that hour, Yahweh Shai rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, all right, the wise and prudent of this world, and hath revealed them unto babes, even so, and that word babes means unskilled or unlearned, okay? Even so, Father, so it seemed good in thy sight. Okay, it was good in the most high sight. So it says, so-called fourth, fourth industrial revolution, which will lead to a fusion of our physical, digital, and biological identities. So there you have it, man. There you have it. So, hey, as, as, as days go by, this, like I said, this is going to be, you know, uh, uh, continuously being talked about to the point where it's going to be uh, on the scene. It's going to be active. It's going to be what it is. Just like how you got cash and cards. Nah, this is what's going to be the new thing, man. And these devils are moving very, very quickly uh, toward that because Satan is in them. And what thou doest, do quickly. All right? But you want to know that that you have been warned by the prophets of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, man. And we are employees of the, of the king of the universe. All right? That's not nothing lightly to take. All right, and I, I we say that humbly because we serve the heavenly Father Bashim Yahweh Shai, uh, um, you know, through through which I, it's our reasonable service to do. Okay, but um, I'm in, in that there, you know, Lord willing, this was edifying uh, to the elect, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rakakodash. Till next time, Shalom.